Russians have always been good at intelligence. Uh, when they need to be, they're very disciplined. They're very professional. Uh, they know how to hide moles, whether it's in London or New York or Washington. Uh, they know how to keep secrets when they have to. Now, with the war in Ukraine, the eyes of the world are on Vladimir Putin. Questions abound now about what he wants, his motives, as well as many other things about the man. But should the authorities across the West, power across the West, have been asking these questions with more rigour long ago? If they had, could his rise have been stopped? It's something one former CIA agent has been asking as he tries to solve a long unknown mystery that of uncovering the so-called fourth man, a KGB spy in the top ranks of the CIA, who may have played a part in blinding the US to the rise of Putin and to the bellicose Russia that we see today. Well, the former CIA operative and security analyst for CNN is Robert Baer, and he joins me now on the line from New York. Thanks so much for joining. Thank you. Um, Just tell us first, if you will, about the fourth man. Who Who is this fourth man? Or perhaps you can't say yet. Uh, we don't want to give too much away. But why has it not been exposed before by uh, the CIA? And it's now taking you, a former CIA agent, to look into this mission. Well, first of all, it, this is the longest running spy investigation in American history. Bar none. It started in 1994 and continued as of last month with FBI agents going around the United States asking questions and people in my book as well, you know, did they miss anything? This is not a leak investigation. And the FBI believes, and I'm not coming up with my own narrative, that he's been the most destructive spy in American history. Uh, He had access to everything across the State Department, the White House, the CIA, the Pentagon, and the rest of it, and gave it to the Russians. That's their conclusion. I don't have all the evidence they're basing this on. But they, he certainly contributed to the United States, failing to see the rise of Vladimir Putin and the people behind him. And it's one of the reasons, you know, frankly, that, that we're surprised that he invaded Ukraine and is carrying out genocide. Um, there was a KGB plot that went back to the 90s. Uh, they spent their time and in 1999, Putin takes over in a, what I call a silent coup d'etat. Just explain, if you will, a little bit more why the fourth man, this uh, agent that hasn't been exposed, why would he have got in the way of a fuller and more um, sort of rounded understanding of Putin as he rose through the ranks? Well, first of all, he had access to the conversations between Yeltsin and, and Bill Clinton. And he took those transcripts and gave them to Putin's KGB, which is called the FSB. And then Putin turned around and showed him to Yeltsin and scared Yeltsin. This is according to CIA information. And it was at that point that Yeltsin decided that the KGB was everywhere um, and uh, decided to appoint him as prime minister and then eventually his successor in 1999. Uh, This is the best estimate there is. There's also a question whether the fourth man gave up Pentagon plans for new weapons systems, which the Russians then used to redesign their weapons once being used in Ukraine. You uh, write about the KGB and you also, of course, write about the CIA. Uh, you seem to suggest, well, you, you do suggest, the KGB is, according to you, the best intelligence service in modern times. The CIA you describe as a seraglio of eunuchs who felt most comfortable with their heads stuck in the sand. This was you writing about um, the former spy, uh, Ames. That's an interesting way to compare the CIA, which you were a part of, and the KGB. Well, the Russians have always been good at intelligence. Uh, When they need to be, they're very disciplined. They're very professional. Uh, They know how to hide moles, whether it's in London or New York or Washington. Uh, They know how to keep secrets when they have to. There's a lot of incompetence in the KGB, to be sure. But the CIA, when it lost all of its sources in the mid 80s, decided to stick its head in the sand. It just The person who suggested there was a mole, a Russian mole in the CIA, was summarily 
fired from the directorate of operations. I know, I know the man. Uh, when the other investigators say, I, we know who the mole is, it's Rick Ames, they were sidelined as well. And this is their story, why it took the CIA, uh, you know, nine years to catch the mole. They simply didn't want to look. I mean, it's bad enough knowing you've got a mole, but it's even worse exposing that mole for an intelligence agency. Why didn't they want to look? I mean, you talk you talk quite damningly. I just uh, quoted one part of the book about the Seraglio of eunuchs, but you talk quite damningly um, about the CIA. As I say, you were part of it um, for a while. Uh, you call it the um, a place where intelligence is the enemy of ambition. Um, you, you know, there's quite a lot of alcohol in some of your stories. People don't, I suppose, feel much confidence if that's the CIA, or hopefully, perhaps that's a side of it is rendered a little to the past. It's a little to the past. It was the CIA in the eighties, uh, clearly, and and certainly with the FBI, because don't forget there were three moles. There was Ed Lee Howard, there was Rick Ames, and there was Bob Hansen, which essentially gutted Russian operations in the eighties. That's just a matter of fact, right up to two thousand and one. Um, with that kind of track record, you have to explain why it happened. Why was the discipline so bad? Why did they lose so many agents? Why were we blind to Russia going into 1999? And I'm simply basing this on the people who worked on Russian operations. This is their narrative, not mine. Um, they were disgusted that, that there was no serious mole hunt all these years and they were disgusted that the fourth man investigation which started in 1994 was summarily closed down because no one wanted to hear it it wasn't until 2006 that the fbi picked it up and started it over again and made it a very active investigation till today and the fact that there could have been a leader of the cia working for the russians is damning in itself so have you identified the fourth man I go through all the suspects. I've written a thriller. It's up. The man has not been indicted. I know the man. I am very sympathetic to him with the evidence I have. I certainly wouldn't convict if I were on a jury, but I let the reader decide by the end of the book who the fourth man was. Uh, I just want to bring up um, another. You, you were talking about the exchanges between Yeltsin and Putin at the start. Um, you know, one of the things that the US might have been influenced by and why didn't see the story of the rise of Putin. Uh, but you do talk um, really interestingly about the interference of Yeltsin's daughter. If we're looking at how and why Putin got to where he got to, if it wasn't for Yeltsin's daughter, uh, that he he may not know he may we may not know the Vladimir Putin we see today. Well, it it was clear, and there's some great books on this. One of them's Putin's people that that Yeltsin was blackmailed. Uh, Putin caught the Yeltsin family in corruption, made it look like the investigation was going to go through. Maybe even Yeltsin was going to go to jail. Putin parachutes himself into the equation, gets rid of the prosecutor with Kompromat. Um, Putin, in a lot of ways, was the savior of the Yeltsin family. And we intercepted, and by the way, this was cleared by the CIA, we intercepted calls between Tatiana, the daughter, and her father, saying it's got to be Putin. We got to put, put him in power. And that's exactly what happened. And the next day, uh, Yeltsin calls up the head of the Duma and said, I want Putin to be prime minister. So Yeltsin was very much strong armed in appointing uh, uh, Putin. I mean, just it, it, the record is clear on that. Just finally, I, I began by saying um, that the eyes of the world are, of course, on Vladimir Putin. There are so many questions and speculations about what he wants, his motives, where this is all going. Um, you say that the US has been blind to that for you know reasons that we've been talking about, but it what would you say, uh, where do you see this Putin's motive, Putin going in the next uh, month and in the sort of foreseeable future? He is committing genocide in Ukraine. He's going to continue to shell until he's destroyed Ukraine as a country. And if he has to drive 40 million Ukrainians into Europe, he will. Um, he's looking at the long haul. He's depending on China to buy Russian energy. He's at a war with the West. 
He believes it's an existential threat to Russia and he's not going to stop. And oh, is there going to be a coup against Putin? I have no idea. And I don't think anybody else does. Uh, can I move just lastly away from this story? Um, seeing as we're talking to you, uh, of course, I mentioned you're in New York and very significant news uh, coming out of the States this afternoon about the decision to overturn um, Roe versus Wade. I wonder what you think the significance of this is, not just this decision, but whether you think it will impact other decisions made by the Supreme Court going forward. I can be a be very alarmist, and I think the United States is moving to some sort of serious division, a conflict uh, that will rival the Civil War. Um, you have a, a, a evangelical fascist court, which is clear to me at this point, and there's going to be a uh, institutional crisis in the United States, which will have untold effects over the next couple of years. And we could get a, a right wing government in 2024, whether it's Trump or somebody else, which would then carry out a legitimate coup against American democracy. That sounds horribly alarmist, but every day we inch toward that. Well, Robert Baer, thank you very much indeed for coming to talk to us on Times Radio. Uh, and of course, the fourth man, uh, just uh, the fourth man picking up your book, The Hunt for the KGB CIA Mole and Why the US Overlooks Putin, um, a thriller, but a very serious, uh, of course, story that shows that uh, fact is often much more gripping than fiction um, is out now. Thanks for joining us on Times Radio. Well, this is Hannah McInnes on Times Radio in association with Yesterday. TV for curious minds.